So we're out here on this cold and dreary fall day because we need to winterize. It is the most dreaded job an RVer faces, and not because it's hard. It's actually not that bad if you follow the step-by-step -step process. It's hard because it signifies the end of a camping season. So stick around and we will show you our process for winterizing, especially now that we have the grand design and the new Nautilus system. I was really hoping for a warmer day to do this, nicer weather, but this is Ohio in the fall, so we had to take what we can get. So for starters, what I like to do is get things out of my way that I don't need. Um, and while doing that, I'll tend to go through anything that has to do with water, which is this is my fresh water container. Take out anything that might hold water over the winter and could potentially freeze. Great example of that is if you use those blue water filters, those actually have a lot of water inside and they will freeze and burst over the winter. So just to be safe, if it could hold water, I take it out of the trailer. Now that we've got a little room to work, let's talk a little bit about this Nautilus system. So just to be clear, I'm in no way affiliated with Grand Design or any other products that I mention um, in this video. It's not an official video of Grand Design. This is just my experience over the years of RVing and getting my hands on the new Nautilus water system. So I will put a link down below to the actual PDF instructions from Grand Design's website. So you can go there, download it, follow along step by step to see exactly what they recommend when you are winterizing and actually just overall maintenance and how to use each of the sets settings with this system. Any other products, anything that I discuss or we talk about, if they're available on Amazon, I'll put a link down below and we are affiliates with Amazon. So it is a way for you to also support us with these videos. Click those links, buy any products that uh, we are using here today and we get a little bit from that. So it does help us out on our channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does help us continue to bring you these types of videos. So getting that out of the way, let's get to this system. So for the first step, we're actually going to be setting this to the power fill option. We're not going to do the winterize option quite yet. So follow the power fill diagram. And what we're going to do now is drain all the low points, the hot water heater, and then we are going to push air through the lines. So every rig is going to be a little bit different. And what you have to do is just get down and find your low point drains, open them up, let all the water drain out. It's a good idea to open some faucets inside so the air comes through and allows this to drain better. After the low point drains, find your hot water heater. Now the hot water tank is going to be different models for different units. This particular one in the grand design um, does not use the anode rod. So all we have to do is remove the drain plug and let that drain. So I'm a big fan of socket wrenches, but because of this little piece in here, I can't fit the socket in. So if anybody out there has ever drained this model, um, I'd like to know how you do it. If you've rigged up anything to make it easier to, to get in there. you can open your pressure valve. Then you obviously want to drain your freshwater tank as well. Grand Design gives you these nice two inch valves. So this doesn't take very long. Now for this next step, Grand Design recommends putting all of these valves at a 45 degree angle. And what that's gonna do is leave everything partially open. Even when I did that, I don't know if you can hear a little bit of that gurgling in there. That's gonna help get rid of any extra water that's in the lines. And we are gonna now hook up our compressor and blow air in there. So for the compressed air part, um, I know there's a lot of people that have never done this and they have been just fine. 
as long as you do an RV antifreeze thoroughly through the system. But I like to follow the process step by step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, compressed air and we're gonna do it based on, again, Grand Design's recommendation, putting the valves at a 45 degree angle and never exceeding 40 PSI with your air compressor. Now with my compressor, I don't have any quick connects or anything. What I have is this plug that will allow me to plug it directly to the city water connection. And now I have an air valve directly on my water connection. So we will plug in the compressor. Oh, look at that convenient plug Grand Design thought of. Attach the compressor, set the PSI to 40. Now once I let that run for a while at the 45 degree angle, I put all of this back to the city water setting, except I do keep the hot water heater bypassed. And then I will turn this on again, let it build up to pressure, and then you can blow any remaining water out of the actual lines, not just the low point drains. You will now want to put your low point plugs back in place, not hot and cold. We will just hand tighten this for the winter because in the spring we're going to have to take this out and clean it out. Do that for hot and cold. So this is another good reminder. Don't forget any outside ports, outside showers. Get that water out of those lines as well. Head inside. Open and let that run. And you want to do this for each faucet, hot and cold. And of course, don't forget your shower. Again, hot and cold. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're still going to be running antifreeze through these lines. And after I've done that, I will go back in and re-take out the low point drains. And you'll find that there's even more water coming out. So now that we are done with the compressor, low point drains and all faucets, including exterior, have blown mostly clear of water. We can now switch these back to the winterize setting, completely bypassing the hot water tank this time, in order to now pump antifreeze into the water system. So we got the air compressor out of the way, and for the next step, Time to pull out your RV antifreeze. Don't have to use anything special um, as long as it is RV and marine antifreeze. This is supposedly non-toxic, so you can get it into your drinking water system and in the spring you just flush it out of the system. If there's any residual, it's not really gonna hurt you or kill you. Um, so don't use auto antifreeze, use RV and marine antifreeze. And with this system, you are gonna need a little piece of hose, preferably less than six feet long. If it's longer than that, it's gonna be hard to stay primed because this is gonna use your water pump to suck the RV antifreeze from the gallon jugs itself, or whatever size you get, directly into your system. If you don't have the Nautilus system, you might have to plug directly into a water pump. I will put a link up in the corner to our last travel trailer winterizing video where we show you how to winterize when you don't have this Nautilus system. So if you haven't seen that, you can uh, click over there and check it out too. But with the Nautilus, makes it easy. You just hook this hose up and let the water pump do the work. Once again, using the city water connection. And by the way, for mine, all I did was cut off a piece of one of our old freshwater hoses. You'll just insert that into the jug and then turn on your water pump.
And there you go. Now, if it has a hard time staying primed and won't pull in, you can also try to set it up higher or get a shorter hose. So once you got that going, once again, come back inside. And you're hot and cold again. Let that go until it runs pink. And we'll go up to the bathroom. And it's okay to overdo it, letting it go down the drain because you want some in the drain anyway. So all drain pipes also have antifreeze. And especially, don't forget your toilet. And of course your shower. Again, hot and cold. And then any remaining amounts I have, I will intentionally dump down the drains. The rest of this just gets dumped down the drains, goes in the drain traps, and then also in your gray tanks. All told, I used four gallons of RV antifreeze, and you saw how much extra I had to put down the drains. So. Good method. So definitely an easy job that just about any RVer can take care of on their own. It's really nothing to be afraid of. Once you learn the workings of your water system, you need to have a good understanding of all those things to really maintain and take care of your RV in the first place. So this is one more chance for you to educate yourself, learn something about your RV so you can better take care over the long run and things don't break. And when they do, you'll be ready and know how to take care of it. So little side perk to doing this yourself is just to get a better understanding of how things function. So a couple other things that I do when we winterize and then I really recommend you do, make sure you prop open your refrigerator. Ours has these built-in tabs to make sure it doesn't accidentally get closed for the winter season. If yours doesn't have the tabs, you can use something to prop it open. Some of them also have those little plastic pieces that you can wedge in the door. And heading back outside, I will take the battery out i will take it inside put that on a trickle charger for the winter so before i do that i bring in the slides you do not want to leave your slides open in storage or for the winter even if they are sealed and meant for that um, sometimes water can get underneath that seal build up when it freezes it melts refreezes and it can just make that gap bigger and bigger and then you now have a water issue inside so if you're not using the camper put those slides in the other thing put up your rear stabilizers so that you don't have to worry about those freezing up and being rendered useless in the spring when you go to use it or take it out of storage front jacks are more than enough keep yourself steady over the winter also cover your tires if you're not going to use an all-over RV cover, at least cover up the tires for the winter. And that's it. Done for another season. Got the slides in, the jacks up, winterized. If you want to see how to winterize when you don't have the Nautilus system, don't forget to click that link I put up there for last year's winterization video when we had the travel trailer. This is the first time we've winterized this one. Hopefully we covered everything. So we are done for another camping season, but that doesn't mean we are done releasing videos this year. Anybody who watches the channel knows that we are a couple months behind. We still have stuff from our summer and fall trips left to release to you. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified when we upload new content. And don't forget if this video was helpful to you, hit that like button, it really does help. And we appreciate any positive feedback or if you have anything you wanna to add to the winterizing process, things that you do that I may have missed or forgotten, Put down in the comments below, love to hear about it. But 
Having said that, I am done. Time to pack it up for another year. But don't forget, we've got more videos coming to you. So we will see you next time.